More than $950 million has been raised in Texas Tech University's Vision and Tradition campaign. Tonight, we look at what has made this campaign so successful. Plus, he was a staple at the Jones through two head coaches in 10 seasons. We're talking Midnight Matador and the legacy he leaves as he heads to the green pastures of retirement. And it's Hall of Fame time for Texas Tech Athletics. We'll take a look at the accomplishments on and off the field for these Red Raider Hall of Famers. But first on Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hans, nestled in the education building on the Texas Tech University campus is a special center providing valuable resources for those living with autism spectrum disorders. Good evening everyone, I'm Robert Giovanetti. Thanks for joining us. Our Sophia Hallbrook takes us inside the Burkhart Center and introduces us to a student who has reaped the benefits of this unique program. <laughs> The Burkhardt Center for Autism Education and Research opened its doors in October of 2005. Its mission? To provide services for individuals with autism, a disorder of neural development characterized by impaired social interaction and communication. The resources provided by the Burkhardt Center have made a world of difference for students Spencer Ragland and her mother Donna. It is geared for young adults with autism when they graduate from high school that do not fit into traditional college and they focus on social skills, they have lots of so social activities, they work on job skills is the main thing, they have job coaches, and that is what the, their main goal is. It's a three-year program, at the end of the program they want every student to be gainfully employed. I love it. It has helped me get a job, it's helped me make new friends, I've met new people, I've got to go out with people, to get different stuff. It's really, a, it's just an awesome program. Spencer is just one of many students who have achieved great milestones during their time at the Burkhart Center, including the opportunity to work in the community. Recently, students had the chance to hear valuable advice from one of their own, Temple Grandin. There's a lot of kids that get different labels, and they're kind of quirky and different, and they get fixated on something. And what you want to do is take that fixation and broaden it out. Also, there's a lot of kids that are kind of different that have uneven skills. They might be a really good visual thinker, good at art, or good at math. We've got to build up their area of strength. And we've got to be thinking about, what's that kid going to do when he grows up? And develop the skills that he has into skills that can make him employable. Spencer has in fact developed those skills and landed a job with the Garrison Center Nursing Home. It has been awesome. I have got to learn how to um, how to go to the residents and speak clearly and um, be patient with them. And um, I've got to learn how to do the paperwork there and just be doing it on my own. And, and then I've got to learn, also learn how to um, do the activities with them. Thank you, Sophia. Janice Magnus is the director of the Burkhart Center. She had a chance to sit down with Chancellor Hans. Let's take a look. Janice, uh, we're glad to have you. And, and tell me, how long have you been with the uh, Autism Center? I came to the Burkhart Center in 2007 after retiring from Lubbock Public Schools, for, worked there for 30 years, uh, 20 of those years in special education, specifically dealing with children with autism. Okay, and the, the Burkhart Center, uh, Jim Burkhart and his wife, Jerry Lynn, have provided funds to, to help us get this going, and we're building our own building. That's correct. And the Transition Center, tell a little about what you do because I think this is fascinating, uh, how you help someone transition from school to maybe and probably having a job. That's right. What, we, what our focus is, and we've kind of evolved from when I first came, uh, when I first got to the Burkhart Center, there were three students. And now we have 11, which is basically all we have room for right now until we get our building. What we try to do is help students who have graduated from high school, which is one of our requirements. Uh, they can have graduated with a special education degree or a regular tracked education degree. Uh, we feel like they're pretty well through with their academics and what we try to work on is social skills, job skills, and life skills, which they uh, have a deficit in due to their autism. And our focus has become and is really honing in on competitive employment for our students. We have found and the research shows that people who graduate high school with autism uh, more often than not typically go home and pretty much stay at home. 
They play video games all day. They watch TV uh, while their parents are working. They, uh, there's a big obesity rate because they're no longer exercising. So our goal is to get them out and about. We, uh, we work on job skills, life skills, and social skills with an emphasis on employment. And what we do is we have unpaid internships on the campus specifically, because this is like a, a little city here. We have almost everything you'd wanna do right here at Texas Tech. And we've been very fortunate to receive a lot of help. Uh, the Texas Tech Rec Center, the uh, cafeterias, uh, the parking, I mean, the uh, garage where they do the maintenance has been wonderful. Right, one of the, one of the things that, that it seems to me, you know, you're taking them uh, when they get out of high school and you're taking for three years. Yes, sir, three years. And during that period of time, they'll have some jobs that uh, they don't get paid, but That's they're right. learning a skill. Yes. And then at the end of that three years, they will be a productive member of society. That's correct. And and that that is so important. <laughs> And, and I've been around some of the kids, and once they get a job, they're so proud of it. We've networked with uh, the Physical ed Education Department at Tech through Jeff Key. We take our students twice a week to physical fitness classes in one of the gyms, and he has been wonderful to put his students, his Texas Tech students, with our students. And so, you know, all of my students, even though they are not tuition-paying members of Texas Tech, they all think they're going to Texas Tech. They're big supporters of all the sporting events and of you. Uh, we talk about football, basketball. Uh, we do that every Monday morning. Um, we do physical fitness twice a week and we have a certified music therapist who comes in and helps us and we put on a talent show every April that is excellent it's getting better every year and our crowd is growing from the talent show to where we're going to have to move it from the basement of the college of ed to somewhere else one of the young men was uh, they have a youtube where he uh, appeared on uh, one of the tv shows that's correct uh one of our students what was his name sam schreffler Sa yeah he has always liked dancing he's never had any formal lessons he decided after one year of the Burkhart Center, he said, it's helped my confidence. I'm going to apply when they come close to Lubbock. I'm going to go try out. So when they went to Dallas, he went to Dallas and tried out for So You Think You Can Dance. And it was a wonderful performance. He didn't get past step one, but it's been all over YouTube, and he's just the best ambassador we could have. Janice, he <laughs> is. He does a great job. You do a great job. We're Proud, very proud well, of the Burkhart you. Center, and thank thanks you. for being here today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Still to come on Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hintz, the Vision and Tradition campaign is drawing near its $1 billion goal. We'll take a look at the hard work behind this fundraiser. Plus, farewell, Midnight Matador. It's a retirement fit for a king, as Red Raiders say goodbye to an oldie but a goodie. But first, here's your look around campus. Dr. Brian May officially approved as the new president of Angelo State University. The Board of Regents gave the nod, making May the successor of Dr. Joseph Rollo, who was announced as Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at the Texas Tech University System. Dr. May, who is the toast of San Angelo, has secured nearly $10 million in federal funding and state funds for some of the university's top programs. Speaking of funding, Texas Tech faculty and staff celebrate the institution qualifying for funding from the National Research University Fund. Tech will receive $8.4 million from NRUF. That money will be used to add faculty and to support graduate students and undergrad research activity. That's your look around campus inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Kent Hance. We'll be right back. People are looking for more light and less heat. Washington Week viewers are going to get it straight ahead, and that's what they count on us for. When we do these road shows, it not only helps me, but it helps all of our panelists to find out what is really on people's minds. We want to let you know what the information is, and then you decide what you want to think. That's what I think is unique about public broadcasting. There's nothing else like it out there. Tell him what's in your heart. That's all ahead on tonight's News Hour. Let's go! <laughs> Hang on!
this for the world. Welcome back to Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hanson. I'm Robert Giovanetti. Vision and Tradition, the campaign for Texas Tech, has raised well over $900 million for the Texas Tech University system. In fact, it's just a little less than $50 million away from reaching the $1 billion goal. Our Keith Kohanek takes a look at what's helped make this campaign so successful. Announced in September 2010, Vision and Tradition has raised more than $955 million for this system. Dr. Kelly Overly is Vice Chancellor of Institutional Advancement and oversees all fundraising for the system. Overly says seeing the campaign get closer to reaching its goal is exciting, but not surprising. It doesn't surprise me because Texas Tech alumni and friends are so generous and they've given so much to this campaign that I'm really not surprised at all. I think the enthusiasm is, is surprising uh, in this time of economic pressure and stress. Uh, Texas Tech has surpassed our goals and uh, it helps having Chancellor Hans as our, as our star fundraiser. At a recent campaign event, the Chancellor announced a $2 million donation from Apache Corporation. The donation is eligible for matching funds from the Texas Research Incentive Program, which will double its impact. The gift will establish the Apache Upstream Research Center inside Tech's new Petroleum Engineering Research Building. Gifts like this are part of what's making vision and tradition so successful. And even after the campaign reaches the $1 billion goal, its impact on the system will continue. The campaign is allowing us to build buildings, to provide scholarships for students who may not be uh, going to college. It's allowing us to um, recruit and hire the very best faculty members. So I think after the campaign's done, you're going to see a new Texas Tech. Thank you, Keith. We're now joined again by Chancellor Ken Hansen. Uh, Chancellor, it's going to be very proud for you to see the, w the strides we've made with the Vision and Tradition campaign. Uh, six years ago when I came here, uh, we announced that uh, we're going to raise a billion dollars. And a lot of people thought that, you know, there's no way you can do that. And we felt that there was. Uh, it was pretty optimistic. And right now we've raised over $950 million. We'd set a deadline by the end of 2013, and I feel confident that we'll get there early in 2013 and uh, we'll raise our billion dollars and that money's going for scholarships it's going for fellowships it's going for chairs for professorships for buildings uh, all kinds of things and it's helped us get us our get our uh, endowment fund up to almost a billion dollars and since we started this uh, on the endowment fund we have gone past a lot of great schools we were 127th and uh, now we're, we've gotten up to 84th in the nation. But we've gone past LSU, Ole Miss, University of Tennessee, Mississippi State, Oregon, Oregon State, Syracuse, a lot of great schools. And so our people have worked hard and, and we've had a great staff. Uh, Dr. Overly has been an excellent person in uh, making sure that we were uh, raising money, did a great job, and uh, her staff, uh, boy, I, I tell you, we've got the best people out there. And uh, this is not one or two individuals, this is a team effort. And uh, I want to say a special thank you for all the Texas Tech people that have gotten involved in it. Yeah, you mentioned Dr. Overly, and we saw her in, in Keith's story, and she talked about just how she's been, it's, it's made her excited to see the excitement of the alumni and the donors. It is, and, and you know, you look at the buildings, the Rawls College of Business. That's as nice a building in, in, on any college campus in America. I mean, it's excellent. Uh, you look that we've added the new dorm at Boston, and then the commons that United Supermarket helped us with that's a part of it. And uh, United, uh, they, they felt like we ought to have something that would be a cross-section of what people might want to eat. And uh, I'm telling you, if you ever go in there, and if any viewers, uh, you know, go by there sometime, you have all kinds of choices, and it's a great place. But we're also starting on the Petroleum Engineering Building. Uh, that's, uh, you know, we've got one of the top petroleum engineering departments uh, anywhere in America. And our problem is, you know, we have to turn down so many kids is that just having enough faculty members and, and being able to teach them all and teach them well. So uh, a lot of 
a lot of kids try out for petroleum engineering or they apply and they just don't get in. But it's very competitive and they, they get great jobs coming out. Uh, but uh, we the Burkhart Autism Center, uh, the new chapel, I mean, we have a lot of things that we're building that have really worked out well. Simulation Center in uh, Odessa. Uh, it's not just uh, Lovell, it's Odessa and, and uh, Midland and, and El Paso, San Angelo and uh, Amarillo that, that we've had new construction. I know you're very confident 2013 will reach that one billion. What happens at that point? Do you, do you start looking ahead or do you take well, any you time? Look, to... You take a little time off, uh, but you start planning uh, another campaign uh, and uh, usually it's a year or so before you do that. And uh, you make sure that you have great stewardship on the people that have given and that they know what their money's going for, uh, that you uh, invest that money closely in it. And our investment committee does a great job. Uh, we, we've had great return. And so people can know that their, their investment's going to be well, well taken care of. One of the things that, uh, that I think about scholarships, Anyone that's uh, listening to us uh, tonight, I hope they'll consider giving a scholarship. You can pay these out, the scholarship is in your name, and uh, it, it'll help a lot of students. As the state gives us less money, we need more help from the private sector. So uh, anyone that's listening, uh, if you'd call my office uh, <laughs> or Dr. Overly's office, we can show you how to set up a scholarship in your name. And again, you see all those great students walking around campus, that, and that's where your scholarship money goes. We see all these buildings, these beautiful buildings. We've got the vision of tradition signs. It's really an exciting time for, for all Texas Tech stakeholders. Things are going well at Texas Tech. All right, Chancellor, thank you very much. Still ahead on Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hance, Red Raider Hall of Famers. A few blasts from the past whose athletic accolades earned them a spot in the Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame. And a final farewell to Midnight Matador as Red Raiders come together to remember what made this horse so special you're watching Inside Texas Tech with Chancellor Ken Hance. It's time to celebrate with an all new Call the Midwife holiday special. It's a season for big events. We're concentrating on our nativity play. Yay! Small packages. Trixie! And enduring hope. Merry Christmas. Don't miss the Call the Midwife holiday special. your love anymore. Great joys for any Texas Tech football fan is watching the Masked Rider and Midnight Matador storm the field. This year, after 10 seasons, Midnight Matador is retiring, and as Paul Hunton tells us, although he will be replaced on the field, he will always remain fondly in our Red Raider memories. What defines a legacy? Is it 12 years of loyal service? Is it victory? Is it inspiring hundreds of thousands of fans across the country? However you define the legacy of Midnight Matador, his impact on Red Raiders everywhere is undeniable, especially those who know him best. You create a really strong bond with the horse, especially since you have so many appearances together, but you do a lot of things that aren't really common that you do with horses like football games, baseball games, so it's just so strong and so unique, especially in this program. Midnight Matador is not an average horse. Besides being one of the most famous mascots in college football, he's also a special animal with a rock-steady temperament. He sits through fireworks, bands, 
and jet flyovers. All the while waiting for his time to take the field. It takes a very special animal to be able to handle just this crowd. This is where he becomes special, where the, you have the crowd, you have the noise, the fans in that stadium, so he is special. He's retiring this year due to a leg injury that he will recover from. And while he won't charge the field again, his rides will forever be remembered in Texas Tech lore. for this truly unique horse and dedicated member of the Texas Tech Rodeo family. Thank you. One last cheer, one last goodbye for a very cherished Red Raider. Robert, the first thing I fell in love with when I moved here about two years ago was watching uh, the Mass Rider and Midnight Matador storm the field. It's a pretty magnificent and unique thing to Texas Tech University. Yeah, and Paul, I know that you were out there a lot before the games, and that's great too. The, the families bring their kids up, and the horse stands out there, and, and it's great, family friendly. It's just the whole, it, the whole atmosphere. It really, really is, and, and people just line up down that sidewalk and just go and go to, to get a picture with the horse. And one thing that, that you saw in the story a little bit, and it's just magnificent, being around the horse is the temperament of that horse right. is incredible. To be among all those people and all those fans and to just be calm is, is a really amazing thing to see. A lot of noise, a lot of, a lot of distractions, and the horse just stands there and, and puts up with it all. And the other thing is I thought interesting in your story that the riders develop a unique relationship with the horse also. They do. Uh, the, all of the riders who rode Midnight Matador were there for the game and they all talked about just how close they were to that horse and they still went right into that mode of being right. the mass rider and they all kind of protected and walked with him. It was, it was a real joy to see how much that mascot means to the university and how much he means to those riders as well. Great story, great horse. Appreciate it, Paul. Thank you. All right, every year Texas Tech Athletics has the privilege of honoring a new class of Hall of Fame inductees. Let's take a look as our Marcella Garcia introduces us to four Red Raiders whose athletic accolades and accomplishments in their sport has gained them a spot forever recognized in the Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame. The tables were set and everything was in order at the McKenzie Market Alumni Center. Awaiting the ceremony, guests mingled in the foyer and caught up with old friends. With a guest list filled with very important past and present athletes and coaches of Texas Tech, the night was particularly important for four former Red Raiders. Amanda Renfro was a pitcher for the Red Raiders from 1998 to 2001, holding every significant pitching record in school history. She led the Big 12 in innings pitched and appearances in 1999. In innings pitched, appearances, starts, strikeouts, complete games, and opponent batting average in 2000, and led in ERA, strikeouts, and second in wins in 2001. With a list of record-breaking stats, Renfro was proud to be recognized and able to represent Texas Tech softball. I'm really excited to be the second softball player. Um, it's just it's awesome. It's, I can't even explain it. <laughs> Ricky Williams, a running back for Tech from 97 to 2001, set the school record for single game and single season receptions, remains third in school history in career rushing yards, left Tech's third in career total yardage, third in single season touchdowns, and second in career touchdowns. But Ricky Williams does remember one play where he didn't score, but was supported by his team anyways. My most favorite memory is um, probably one game where I actually fumbled on the goal line going in to win. And, uh, my teammates told me they had my back and they went in and got a turnover at the last minute of the game and we actually won the game. Another all-star running back inducted was Byron Bam Morris. Bam Morris, touchdown, Red Raider. Part of the 91, 92, and 93 Red Raider football team, Morris set some records of his own. In 1993, he set the school record with 1,752 yards rushing, set school record with 3,544 career rushing yards, and was the recipient of the Doak Walker Award given to the nation's top running backs. 
Morris explains what made Texas Tech a unique experience for him as a student athlete. The whole atmosphere, you got, you got everything from top-notch uh, facilities, great coaches, great school, great classes. You know, it's a great, great, uh, great university to be at. Uh, and I'm just glad I was able to come here. Last but not least, Lee Daniel, a distance runner for Texas Tech from 1998 through 2001. Daniel held her own setting school records in the outdoor 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter and the indoor 3,000 and 5,000 meter races. Lee Daniel won seven Big 12 championships and two national championships and was named All-American eight times. Lee Daniel is honored to be one of the athletes inducted into the 2012 Texas Tech Athletic Hall of Fame. You know, it's it's such an honor. I, 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 it's funny, you don't even put yourself in that class of people, I guess, is what my point is. And um, so when I got the phone call, it really took me back because I thought, wow, that's, that's a big deal. It made me feel really good and, and special. And it's just, I mean, I feel so honored, so honored. For Inside Texas Tech, I'm Marcella Garcia. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Don't go anywhere. 24 Frames is up next.